Hey everyone, Dr. Tavala here. If you have upcoming exams, this video is for you. I'll be talking to you a little bit about my tips for before your exams, during your exams, and after your exams. And if that sort of thing interests you, then grab your tea and relax. Before we begin this video properly, I thought I'd give you a little bit more information about my background to put this video into context. I'm a junior doctor in London and two years ago I posted a video where I'd opened my exam results and found out that I failed. Before that, I had passed all of my exams, so I was hoping that that video would be more a hey everyone, I'm gonna become a doctor now, here's my family, let's do this together type thing and obviously it didn't go to plan. Since then, I've made loads of videos in order to share my experience of revising for the reset exam with you guys. I spent this morning on a short video call talking about my experiences with exam failure and I've realized that I don't have one particular video where I've gone into the tips that I have but also the mindset aspects that I've developed that I really wish to share with you and therefore I'm putting this video together. In the run-up to any exam, it's important to have covered all the high yield content. For me, what this looks like is making a mind map with the main backbone. So I'd make branches of all the important things that I ought to know, and then I'll start adding on the meat afterwards using different resources. In my case, as a medical student, I use past med, I use past tests, I use other tiny little revision books that I found from the libraries and from online. And I sift through these books and content in order to add the meat. And in that way, I made mind maps while making sure all the content that my brain wouldn't be able to retain is on there. Mind maps are so underrated and rarely used. In fact, during my time at medical school, I never knew a single person, a single student that I worked with that made mind maps. But in my opinion, it's such a great way to summarize things, especially if you're a visual learner. In the run-up to exams, for me, that's the week before the exam. I'd look over these mind maps. Sometimes I'd rewrite them, especially little segments that have become faded from my memory. My next tip might be a little bit controversial. I know there's this whole culture of trying to be more productive, trying to do more, especially in the lead up to exams. And I do the very opposite in the lead up to my exam. So for me, what's important is prioritizing my well-being. If my mind is at a calm place and I feel good, I'm probably gonna focus more in the exam. I don't want additional stress because I find that counterproductive. Let me try and paint a picture of how I mean. If you're put on the spot and you're in a very stressed environment and somebody asks you a question, will you not struggle to think of a proper answer? And then when you are by yourself and you're thinking about the question that you were asked, things might come to your mind where you're like, oh, I should have said this, or, you know, this is what I really meant, or you start thinking about how you articulated your answer. And usually you start thinking about these better answers when you're in a calm, relaxed environment. So now bring yourself back to a situation where you're revising for your exams and then lead up to it. When you're functioning at this higher stress level, you're not thinking as straight as you should be or as clear as you could be. So throughout the week, when you have this high level of stress, you are actually less efficient and less productive. Whereas if you shift your focus to how you can relax and how you can keep your mind in a calm state, you're more likely to process things with a cool head and be receptive to the content that you're trying to learn, thereby making you more efficient and productive. So instead of rushing through content in 20 minutes trying to be as fast as I can while being super stressed, I'd rather spend 30 minutes reading through that content, knowing that my brain is actually processing those things, and then spending 10 minutes, 15 minutes, even half an hour just relaxing and doing something thing that is calming and whilst I'm doing that my brain is probably processing those things that I've learned. Now in terms of reaching a calm relaxed state of mind this looks different for different people. For me this involves eating well, sleeping well, doing some light exercise, pursuing my hobbies. So my advice for you is to find out what things help you to relax and pursue those. Now my tip for the actual exam when you're sitting it is to be mindful. I find it helpful to know in advance roughly how long I can spend on a question. And what I try to do in the exam is to focus on that question instead of thinking about what else might be to come. I'm not a statistician, so I can't give you the figures, but it's common for people to misread the question, especially in exam situations. If it helps you use a highlighter or helps you use a different colored pen to circle the question, then do that, but make sure you've understood the question so you know what you're answering. There have been situations where I've read part of the question and I've missed the little curveball that they've thrown and therefore answered the question wrongly. Especially where you have the knowledge, you don't want small things like that 
throwing you off from getting the marks that you deserve. So stay mindful, stay focused on the question that you're dealing with at hand, and once you're done with that, move on to the next. In the multiple choice questions that I've had at medical school, every question is worth one mark. If there's a question that I know that I don't really have the knowledge for, that I haven't properly revised, I flag that and then I move on to one which I know is gonna be easier for me, one that I have revised thoroughly and one that I feel confident to answer. I'd rather spend 40 seconds answering a question that I am confident about than spending four minutes on something where I'll probably still get it wrong. Having said that, you can always come back to the questions that are a little bit challenging at the end of the exam if you have time for it. So in summary, stay mindful, stay focused on what the question's asking you. If you know you don't know the answer for it, flag it and come back to it later. Do the questions that you know you find easy and you feel confident about the answers. And then when you have spare time, you go back to and answer those other questions. Now moving on to your actual exam day. This is your time to shine. This is your moment to let the examiners know what you know. How many times have you left an exam that you found highly stressful and you've come across a question from discussion with your colleagues and you're like, oh my gosh, no, the answer was this, but I put down the wrong answer because you were in a highly stressed environment. I know I've definitely had situations like that before I learned how to calm myself. The ideal place to be in an exam situation is that you were cool headed enough to dig in to your knowledge that is probably there because you've probably seen the content that you need to know for your exam beforehand. So my other tip, which is also very similar to my first tip, is to try and maintain a relaxed state. This is the reason why I'm always telling you guys to grab your tea and relax. If you've worked out other ways that help you relax on the day of your exam, then pursue those too. For me, what this looks like the night before the exam is putting my work away, maybe keeping a few mind maps to read on the day of the exam. I tend to have a sleep tea that helps me to actually sleep properly without having nightmares, and then I tend to sleep for eight to 10 hours. This helps to keep me refreshed on the day of the exam so that I can think with a clear mind. I'm a spiritual person, so I tend to recite my prayers before the exam. If you believe in God, you probably trust the process, but just know that whatever happens, there's going to be something that you can learn from it. We'll talk more about this later in the video. On the day of the exam, before the exam, I also try to eat well, so I tend to have something like Weetabix with a banana. I know that I'm addicted to caffeine, so I also have a caffeinated hot drink, but sometimes I would, depending on how anxious I'm feeling, I might add a little bit of herbal chamomile into the tea so that it has the caffeinated effects of waking me up, but also something to calm me. So in a way I guess I'm medicating myself through herbal remedies but that is what personally helps me to stay relaxed. I think it's important to find out what works for you. Some people do some exercise that calms them down. Other people use meditation techniques. I know sometimes singing, if you sing, can help. Whatever it is, you need to find out what's best for you. Another thing that you should understand before your exam is that this is a test of your knowledge. This is your moment to shine. You are already a diamond. You've already worked under pressure, so there's nothing to worry about. We will deal with the exam results afterwards. That is not your concern before your exam because you haven't sat it. And remember that when you are relaxed, you can think better and that is exactly what you need in an exam situation. Lastly, I want to talk about what to do after your exam. So usually there's a bit of time, a week or a few weeks after you finish an exam before you've got your result. And the thing that I want you not to do is to stress because it doesn't achieve anything. There's a flowchart that I came across online and it says the following. If you can do something about a situation, then why worry? If you can't do something about a situation, then again, why worry? The bottom line is, why should you worry? You shouldn't. When you come across a situation, that's when you face it. If you're worrying about failing an exam that you end up not failing, then you've just wasted time worrying for what reason? So my advice after you've done an exam is to enjoy your life. You deserve this. You've worked so hard for something and now you just leave it to the universe or God, whatever you believe. You do your bit to enjoy your life and do the things that you wanted to do. Now, when you get your results, if you've passed your exams, amazing, go out and enjoy. I know some of you still struggle with the whole post-exam freedom where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so used to revising. I don't know what to do with my life now. Go wild. Another thing I want to add is if you've passed your exam and you know somebody who hasn't passed their exam, 
check in on them. They'd probably really appreciate that. From my experience, people who fail exams tend to disappear off the face of earth when really what they need is support. When I failed that exam two years ago, I put it out on social media and to my surprise, people that I knew of that I wasn't close to were the ones that reached out to me and gave me the support that helped me to pass my exam. Even if it was just checking up on me and asking how I'm doing, that really made the difference and it made me feel connected and just gave me a bit more confidence. Now moving on what to do if you have failed an exam, usually universities and schools are quite supportive to their students about resources and revision sessions or somebody to speak to. So I'd advise you to connect with your university about what's out there for you and this would differ from different institutions. The place that I can advise you more on is your mindset. If there's one thing you take away from this video is knowing that and really truly processing that everything happens for a reason, even if it's not what you want, there's something that you'll learn from it and I think it's the same when it comes to exam failure. During your recent exam period there might be one more piece of information that you'll learn that'll make a difference later on in your career. Where if you were, I don't know, in Bali in the beach doing not much then maybe you would not picked up that piece of information even if you're having a great relaxing time. Failing at anything in life is your opportunity to just sit down and truly reflect. Reflect on what worked, reflect on what didn't work, reflect on what you could do better. You'll become more resilient in the process, you'll become stronger Stronger, your knowledge will be consolidated. And if that isn't a positive thing, then what is? One thing to realize if you ever fail an exam is failure doesn't define you. Somewhere down the line, we've developed this mindset that failure is such a negative thing. But people who have failed at major things in life can tell you that it's actually not that bad but it becomes bad and problematic once you let failure define you, when you let the title of that or the situation and circumstance define what happens next. Okay, if you fail at something in life, that has now become the past, right? It's what you do, it's about what you're about to do next that matters. Remember, it's not about how you started, it's about how you're going to finish. If you have failed an exam and you're fortunate enough to resit it, then take a bit of time to recharge and give yourself the break that you deserve. Pursue your hobbies, go to Bali for a bit if time allows, take a revision stuff with you, maybe you can sit on a beach and learn some new things that will help you for your exam. But make sure you do the number one thing of looking after yourself. Again, this looks different for different people, but do the basics of sleeping well, eating well, getting some light exercise in, and pursuing the hobbies that help you feel relaxed and good at the end of the day. Also, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, who will? Be your biggest cheerleader and spur yourself on to achieve your goals and the things that you know you're capable of. I hope we can work together in order to make the experience of exams less daunting, less stressful, more relaxing, a time where we can look out for one another. And remember, success isn't limited. There is enough success out there for everybody. I really hope this video has been somewhat useful and I wish you all the best in your upcoming exams. Mwah.